Welcome back to the channel. I'm Matt, I'm the Whiskey Nerd, and this is the Blender's Cut from Two Stacks. And it is a heavy hitting whiskey coming in at 65% alcohol. So let me get it into the glass and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Now, this is the Blender's Cut from Two Stacks Irish Whiskey. And you can kind of think of it as a counterpart to the first cut, which is their classic kind of core blend. And if you haven't seen my review of that, you can check it out up there. But this whiskey is cask strength, coming in at 65% alcohol instead of the 43% alcohol that the first cut came in at. So it is going to have much more flavor, much more density, much more richness, and of course, much more alcohol coming through. But Two Stacks have hoped that their blending process for this whiskey will have tamed some of that alcohol and kept it approachable. So like the first cut blend, this is a five part blended whiskey. So it is 40% dark grain aged in virgin oak casks, 40% light grain aged in bourbon casks, 8% pot still which is aged in Oloroso sherry buds, 10% double distilled malt which is aged in bourbon casks, and 2% peated malt, which was aged in bourbon casks. So that's gonna be quite a interesting little combination of flavors, quite an interesting variety of notes that should be brought into the whiskey, and hopefully that will have tamed the alcohol. This whiskey wasn't actually aged or matured by two stacks themselves, and they're not hiding that. On the back of the bottle, it does say quite prominently that this was distilled and matured at the Great Northern Distillery here in Ireland. Great Northern is one of the biggest distilleries in Ireland because what Two Stacks are all about isn't making the whiskey, it's the blending, the bonding of the whiskey because that was an art that was quite prominent in Ireland. People would buy different whiskies, blend them in different ways, maybe finish them in different ways to give an interesting new kind of twist on a classic whiskey and that did kind of die out over the last couple of hundred years but Two Stacks are one of a couple of companies that are really trying to bring this style of Irish whiskey back to the fore because there's a lot of interesting things you can do by taking different whiskies and blending them together. And since Two Stacks are putting out a lot of like interesting, maybe once-off whiskey releases like their Polaris collection, they have become somewhat sought after, like the brand is becoming much more well-known, much more appreciated, so they are becoming something of a collector's item, but this whiskey, the Blender's Cut, is one of their core whiskies, so it should always be available. So that's enough talking, let's get into the nose on the Blender's Cut. Okay, off the bat, vanilla and oak, very apparent, like definitely rich undertones of vanilla and some nice oak sap, like that, you know, that, that, that fresh oak resin you get from a tree, that's there. And then some peppery spice coming in behind that. You know, like a white pepper as opposed to a black pepper. And a nice base of caramel. Like as I go on, that vanilla is maybe fading back and getting much more of a caramel coming through in the nose. Mm, it's a very sweet whiskey. Like it's sweet but also quite spicy on the nose. Like I'm getting a lot of baking spices like ginger, like clove coming through, and that would be from that Oloroso aged uh, pastel whiskey. And that's probably also where that peppery note is coming through because pasta whiskey does have a lot of peppery notes to it. And there's also some kind of faintly herbal notes coming through, um, almost like a, like a black tea that I get sometimes in a rye whiskey, but it's coming through here as like a, like a dry tea leaves kind of, kind of vibe. But like I said, it is leading with sweetness. Like, 80% of the whiskey is grain whiskey, which is gonna be quite sweet, it's gonna be quite candy, it's gonna be quite light. And that is definitely coming through. A lot of it was aged in bourbon casks, so you're gonna get a lot of vanilla. So despite the high ABV, it is quite sweet, it is quite rounded. I'm not really getting alcohol burn coming through on the nose. So let's go in for the palate and see if it stays as balanced. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Okay, definitely that's where the ABV is. Ooh, that's quite a nice hit of warming ABV. Like it does spread out. You're initially met with this hit of sweetness, of caramel, of kind of like a creme brulee brown sugar. You know, it's been toasted, it's been slightly burnt. And then as it sits in, as that alcohol kind of spreads out, you get this really nice warming 
spicy, tingly vibe. It's really rich, like that kind of oiliness, that richness from a, like you'd expect from a cast drink whiskey is there. It's like, a, it wouldn't be maybe as rich like a honey, but it's definitely really kind of like dense caramel, just sitting on your mouth, really just living there. There's a bit of the oak sap, that oak resin that I was getting from the nose, that's coming through. And as well, a nice bit of peat. So I didn't really get any of the peatiness coming through on the nose, but I actually am getting quite a bit of that peatiness, that herbal characteristic, that earthy characteristic of the peat coming through on the palate. So I'm gonna go in for another sip and see how that is there. Definitely, definitely there's a nice bit of peat in there. Once your mouth kind of adjusts to that alcohol burn, once you're used to that tingle, you can definitely get that peatiness coming through. It's very earthy, it's very round. I mean, only 2% of this whiskey is peated malt, but it does have quite a lot to say in this whiskey. There's a lot of flavor coming through from that peat, but it's not overpowering the other notes. It's not overpowering the oakiness, the sweetness, the caramel, the sugar. There's a bit of like a tobacco coming through, a bit of like a there's almost like a like a coffee note coming through, but a sweet coffee, kind of like a kind of like a coffee cake. So you, where you get that coffee flavor with the sugar, with the sweetness, with the grain sweetness coming through, quite like a coffee cake with that coffee icing on top. There's a nice, rich, rounded sweetness to this whiskey. If I was gonna say, does it drink lower than 65% ABV? I wouldn't say it drinks lower than 65% ABV. It does have a good hit behind it, a good heat in there. Now that's not to say it's super strong, it's not to say it's not rounded, it just does have a big presence. Some other whiskies, it might be 60% alcohol, it tastes like it's 50. This has a lot to say, but it's not overly alcohol heavy, it's not overly burning on the palate. So let's go in for the finish and see how those flavors finish off. Cheers. Okay, on the finish, the peat smoke, that's hanging on a bit more. That's hanging on kind of on top of the other notes as they fade away. The vanilla, that goes pretty quickly. The sweetness does hang on, that brown sugar, that caramelized brown sugar, that does hang on. The kind of coffee cake note I was getting there in the palate, that fades pretty quickly. That sweetness, that lighter sweetness fades away, but the deeper sweetness does hang on. I'm getting a bit of a resurgence of those kind of spicy, peppery notes I was getting on the nose. Like I'm getting that tingling kind of white pepper note. Now that might be tied to the ABV on the whiskey. That will also give you that tingling, but it is a little bit of a kind of spicy note as opposed to just the heat of the alcohol. But definitely that lingering peat is one of the big notes. Now it's not, of course, gonna be a peated whiskey. It's not gonna be an overly strong peat influence. It's just a nice counterpoint to balance out the sweetness of the whiskey because I would expect this to be quite sweet, but that peat kind of influence hanging on is a bit unexpected in a good way. And this is a good whiskey. Now going by memory, the first cut, the kind of lower ABV blend compared to this one, the blender's cut, the first cut had much more fruity notes, had much more kind of plums and pears and peaches and quite light fruity notes, whereas this is definitely much deeper, much darker, and much of that peaty, rich influence coming through. So it's interesting to see how those whiskies change across with the ABV. Like this is definitely much more of a heavy hitting whiskey and at 65% ABV it's one you should probably treat with a bit of respect, but it is well blended, it is well balanced. You know it's a high ABV whiskey, but it's not burning the mouth off you. I've had some high ABV whiskies they're just high alcohol content, just basically ethanol, just drinking alcohol at that point. This is different, this is nice and rich and rounded and it is a very good whiskey. So I'd suggest you get a bottle yourself and you can enjoy it. Me, myself, I'm gonna keep on enjoying this. I put out whiskey reviews on Wednesdays and cocktail recipes on Fridays, so if you wanna see more, make sure you scroll down, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. It's launching.